Hi. Hi. I'm Chip Hamlin. And I'm Earl Prescott. And this is... Tackle Talk with Chip and Earl. How you doing today, Earl? Chip, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm not doing too bad today. That's good to hear, Earl. It is a nice morning out. Beautiful. And I can't complain at all. What are we fishing for today, Chip? Well, to start out with, I think I'm going to try to fish for some white crappie. What location are we in fishing today, Chip? Well, we're out here on the Muddy River, out in Missouri, fishing for some white crappie. Maybe later we go for some catfish, and then maybe some bass. Chip, let me just tell you something. I've been to a lot of lakes in my entire long career as an angler. And of all of them, Muddy River in Missouri is one of my favorite of all time. Sorry to interrupt you, Earl. My lead was way too long for a white crappie. He was at about eight feet. That's just going to sit on the bottom. He wanted at about not much more than two feet, really. But you're right. The Muddy River in Missouri, it's a great place to fish. You don't have to apologize for interrupting me, Chip. I was, I was quite done talking, so no need to apologize at, at all. Well, that's perfect then. We're going to go ahead and let the worms sit here. I've got red worms on the hook. And for the white crappie, you want to cast over by some weeds if you can. They like to hide in there. So they get some food over there. And then when you do get them on, they're not that tough of a fight. Chip, I see a little... Hey, we got a little, little action little here. Little nip in the bobber there. Do you see there that? There it goes. I'm going to go ahead and set that hook. Chip, set the hook. I'm going to go ahead and reel her in. Oh, yeah, Chip. You fish. can see it's not fighting very hard. Fish on, Chip. Fish on. And we'll, in a matter of moments, we'll have this. Well, and uh, that's, that's in fact that's a bluegill. Not exactly the white crappy we're that's going for. That's not what for, we're looking for here. Still so, a fine looking little, beautiful little baby fish. I'm going to go ahead and release him back to his family. Because yeah. we're fishing for the white crappy. He's going to live a long, happy life, that little guy. I, just I know think it. so. I just know it. I think I might have got a little tangled on that stick over there. That's okay though. Now we just let it sit. Somebody had a Wheaties for breakfast. I had a bagel. Chip, you know, sitting out here today reminds me of a story. And I was wondering, maybe you'd uh, be interested in maybe hearing it, maybe tell you, tell, tell you a story about it. Well, I'd love to hear it, Earl. Why don't you go ahead? Well, I think it was around 11 years old. Um, my father and I, we went out on um, the uh, Lake Hope, which is a small little pond uh, in the Northern Territories. It's a beautiful place. Yeah. And my father took me out, it was ice, we were ice fishing. It was a cold December day, right around Christmas actually. And took us, took me out there and we had the auger. We augered six or seven holes and put our mm -hmm. little tip-ups in, mm -hmm. waiting for, you know, some fish to, to bite onto them. That's well said, Earl. Patience usually is the key to success. Chip, what do you say we take a phone call from a viewer? 
Um, I think it's probably a good time for that while we wait for some uh, white crappy to bite on the line. Why don't you go ahead? So it looks like we've got a caller on the line. I think his name is Charles. Let's see what he has to say. Hi, this is Charles. I'm from upstate New York. I love your show. Uh, Thanks, I Charles. just had a question for Chip and Earl, too, if you want to answer that. Uh, this is kind of a difficult subject for me to talk about, actually, but uh, I'm a, I work in a library. I work at a school, a bunch of kids, and, uh, well, more of a confession. Um, I actually can't read. I am... Uh, 100% illiterate, so it makes daily life very difficult for me, um, you know, especially being in a library all the time. People, you know, children ask me for where this book is, and I honestly can't tell them where to look for it because I can't read the titles of the books. I just kind of point to one and hope that's the one they're looking for or ask them to show me a picture of it. So I was wondering if you guys could, uh, you know, maybe help me out and tell me how to approach the subject and maybe come clean with my, uh, with my disability. Well, that's a great question, Charles. And first, let me just say, I want to commend you for doing the Lord's work, you know, working with children and in libraries. It's very important, and it's good work. It's a so, very, so very special. Good job for you there. Yes. As to the, the question, though, um, I don't know, Earl, do you have any thoughts about that? Yep, you know, we are told that honesty is the best policy. And that's true. That that's is, true. That is said in the Bible and also many other pieces of literature throughout history. Um, I think the most important thing for you to do right now is to come clean with yourself and go home. If you have a mirror in your house, look into it directly into your eyes and say, Charles, you are not dumb. That's right. That's very important. Because when you are illiterate and you cannot read, Blue Gale. there is a negative stigma that comes with that and you think that I'm too stupid. But that is not the truth. That's not the truth. You have a lot of worth and it's time for you to show that. So what I want you to do is I want you to go home and tell yourself that you're not stupid. And then I want you to maybe pick up one of those books. I'm sure you've seen letters and sentences in your everyday life. Maybe start trying to figure them out. I mean, children are our greatest commodity. And schools teach children things. So I think maybe it's time for the children in your school to start teaching you something so don't hesitate to ask little Billy hey what's this word and then he will respond that word is and that was a beautiful Earl and let me just add that uh, you know it's one trick that I find is useful in my life at least earlier on in my life I had similar kinds of issues I had a friend teach me a uh, handful of words, maybe three, four, maybe five words, uh, common words that you could recognize often. And that way, when you see a bit of text or something, and you need to go ahead and disguise yourself as a illiterate person, you can point to a word and say, ah, that word is dog. And then they won't know. Thank you so much for the advice, guys. I really appreciate it, and I, uh, I just love your show. So have a great day. Thanks again. Thanks a lot, Charles. That was a, a wonderful start to the show, I thought. You're welcome, Charles. Anytime, feel free to call in. Chip and I are here for you every minute. And let me just say, what a wonderful person. You know, that takes a lot of courage to go on uh, national fishing broadcast. And go ahead and tell everyone that you don't know how to read. And that's okay. That's okay. Good for you, Charles. Good for you.
Chip, how are we making out with the fishing? Well, I gotta tell you, the white crap here are not biting today. I think I might want to switch over soon. Start doing some catfishing. What do you think about that? Why are the white crappie not biting today, Chip? You know, it might be a little bit early. It's why don't we wait until about 8 a.m. and we'll see what they're biting. Looks like a couple. I, so go ahead. I was gonna say I, th I think that sounds like a great idea. Thanks. Looks like we have a couple of viewers watching on the computers, typing in. Yeah, who, who, who's, uh, who's, uh, who's, talk, who's talking to us today? We have uh, Matiko says, Hi, Chip and Earl. Hi. Hi, Matiko. Hi. Do you have a question for us? We'd be... If anyone has a question on the computers, we're happy to answer as well. If not, that's okay too. We're here to catch some white crappie. We're more than happy to answer any questions you might have about life, love, or fishing. Fishing. Don't forget about that one. Looks like we've had a fair amount of action on our bobber here, but... Uh, no no takers. They're not taking. A lot of shoppers, but no takers. It's a nibbling kind of day, you know? Sometimes I get into those kinds of days myself. You know, sometimes I can't eat a full meal, and I just want to nibble on something. Keep a little something in the stomach. It's called snacking. That's the word. Well, it looks like, uh, Gamester Power wants to know, Why are you guys so calm and blissful? Is it the fishing? If we were powered, I would say that simple answer to that is yes. It's the fishing. It is the fishing. There's something being out here. Two guys just you know, getting back to nature and enjoying the sounds and the company of good friends. Yeah, you know, you often don't get to spend this kind of close Kind of intimate time with your male friends, you know. Fishing is a time for real male bonding, and it's a it's a special thing that means a lot to both of us. And I think it contributes to our calm and collected demeanor, which is important because you don't want to scare the fishes. That's right, Chip. Well, I do say that we have another phone call, another. You were on the line. We would like to be on the uh, in the air with Chip and Earl. Should I put them on, Chip? Yeah, why don't you go ahead and put it on? Okay. Alright, looks like we have anonymous caller on the line. Hello, you're on with Chip and Earl. What's on your mind? Uh, hi, yeah, this, this is... Uh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, this is... um. Frankie, and I'm joined today Dan. by Dan. First name Dan, last name D. Oh, good one, Dan. Yeah, that was a fine one. Anyways, shut the fuck up. You guys touching your fucking danglies together yeah, like a bunch of queers? Yeah, going? You're using your dangly baits? You probably just cut off your danglies and put them in the water and hope you catch a fish or something. And then when you do, you touch danglies together and... I... Go to hell. What the fuck do you do? Go to hell, you fucking queers. Are hang you up, gonna hang go up. ahead and hang up on that, Earl? Crappy aren't really biting today, are they? They're really not. You know, I might switch over to the catfishing soon. I want to remind callers to, uh, it's fine to speak your mind, but if we can keep it, uh, civil, you won't scare away the fishes. That's right, Chip. You know, I think I'm gonna go ahead and try to switch over to the catfishing. We've had some good luck here on the Missouri River, the Muddy River, sorry, in Missouri. Um, and I think uh, we might have to give up on those white crappie. Some days, oh, they I just don't want to bite. see some nibbles on your line. Oh, I think I might have... Oh, 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 there oh, we oh, go. Oh, oh. 
I just I pulled well, him right out of the water. Him, yanked out little, he's a little one, but he's Might a, be another bluegill. A little feisty one. Oh, oh look at that. It's a, a young largemouth bass. You know, I wasn't expecting that. Look at that. That's a fine catch. We got someone uh, saying, a viewer saying, don't listen to them, Chip and Earl. You guys are the best. Wow. Well, that's really encouraging. Thank you so much for that feedback. I think you really appreciate that because sometimes... Well, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and do some catfishing. That's what I do best. So for the catfish, we want to go ahead and put uh, some cheese on the end of the line. Whoops. There we go. And we want to make sure we got a pretty big hook. Maybe a number two size ought to do it. And the rest can stay the same. We want to change our lead to about eight feet or so. Get it nice and deep. And that's Couple. how you go catching catfish. This is how we do catfish. Now there's a nice catfish hole right over here, remember? We got a couple questions. Uh, JP Bluesman says, What's the biggest game in the river? That's that, a good question. That's yet to be determined now, isn't it? You what, never know what, what mysteries. The, what is the largest game? Is it, is it a bullhead or a... Well, you is know, it bigger than that in this lake? I think there's actually some pike in here pike. that you can find. Find. We uh, pike. we don't actually have the license for that, so we're not fishing for them today. If we happen to catch a pike, we must return it to the river because we do not have a license to catch and keep pike. We're gonna have to release it, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that's probably the biggest. And uh, someone else wants to know: Did you just drop the bass? Yeah, Gamester, uh, we dropped the bass because it was just a young, large mouth. We'll do some bass fishing in a little while. And uh, if we're not fishing for bass, we send them back. When we're fishing for them, then we'll keep them. Dandy, it looks like I've got another, another phone call. Oh, I got a fish on here. I think this one might be a... Uh, a uh, some kind of uh, bullhead or catfish. Uh, let's see what we got here. This is a, well, it's a bluegill. It's beautiful. All right. Well, you're never disappointed when you catch a fish, but uh, these bluegills can be a little troublemakers sometimes. Oh, feisty. So it's a, we got a question uh, topped in we, once again. That's right. Well, this is Gamester Power. He wants to know how do I, a man with only a small twig and a length of dental floss become an expert fisherman like you. Gamester Power, let me just say, I admire your spirit and you are starting exactly in the right place. I don't know about you, Earl, but when I was a six-year-old, I was in a similar kind of situation. We didn't have dental floss back then where I was, but I got myself a a nice, strong, sturdy stick and a length of twine. I fashioned a hook out of a nail. I had to file it down a little bit and put a night crawler on the end of it. And I caught my first fish in the local river. It was a perch. I'll never forget it. How did you start fishing, Earl? Now fish on there, Chip. Yep. You got it, it seems. Well, that's 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 a great story, actually, for your Earl. Um, it goes back to my, uh, actually, my first true love. Um, Patsy. She was this pretty girl in my class. Let me pause and interrupt you there. Yeah. That's a young channel catfish. That's an ugly-looking fish, Chip. Look at those whiskers. But you know, they got their own little charm to them, I think. I'm going to go ahead and keep them because we're fishing for catfish. That's a catfish. Yeah, it looks like we are a uh, catfish master. <laughs> Patsy was the prettiest girl in her class. Everybody wanted to be in love with her. Some of the boys wanted to be with her for the wrong reasons. They wanted to 
do inappropriate things to her, but I just wanted to be friends. And Patsy and I got to be really good friends. So, on the 3rd of July, the day before Independence Day, I took her down to Basewater Creek. It's a beautiful bridge there. I don't know if you've ever been to Basewater Creek, but there's a... I haven't been. It's a beautiful bridge overlooking the river, and it, and it goes right across the river. It provides foot traffic over the water. So I took Patsy down there, and I was looking down into the water, the deep, glowing green water, and I saw a beautiful creature. It was a fish. And I had no interest in fishing at the time. I had interest in bicycles and girls. And Patsy leaned over like she was going to kiss me. But I kept looking down into the water. And I turned my head at the last minute right before she kissed me. Looks like I got a fish on here. It's fighting a little bit. That might be another uh, young channel catfish. Could be a bullhead. She's a little bit of a fighter. A little bit. I'm going gentle with her though, you know. I want to see what she's got. Chip, I've got some great news for you. We've got one more phone call from a viewer on the line. Oh boy. Well, look at that. Trophy black bullet. That is a trophy, all right. That's look at that beautiful. one. That's beautiful. That's a pretty big fish. That's beautiful. And we're keeping that because we're fishing for bullheads. Keep. All right, why don't you go ahead and get that call on the line? All right, so we've got one more phone call here from a viewer. We're going to put them on. Hello, you are on the air with Chip and Earl. What's on your mind? Uh, hi, is this the Dumb Fishing Show? Um. Yeah, this is, uh, yeah. Ronald. And, uh, Dan. Last name D. Fuck. Fucking hell, Dan D. Fucked it up. Time. Shut up. Do it on Shut up. Are you guys, uh, fucking having some gay sex out in your boat again? Yeah, how's that going? I mean, do you ever tip it over and fall in the water, and then if you fall in, does someone drown, and then you have sex at the bottom of the lake? Is that how that works? Hey, I got a question for you. If you guys... Fuck, I forgot what I was gonna say. You're not real men. Go fuck yourselves, you pieces of shit. Fucking hang up the phone. Hang it up. Go ahead and reel this one in. Chip, it's getting harder and harder for me to keep my cool when we have a number of people calling us with inappropriate words and messages of hate. And we'd just like to take that to a minimum. So please, stop wasting our time. Stop wasting your own time. And it's not just us. This is a serious show. Many people call in to seek help. We could be taking actual people's call who need help that we could help them with. And, uh... Yeah, it's just a little bit disappointing. I'm really disappointed. I tell you, uh, Matsuko is really in our corner. He says, uh, don't listen to the haters, guys. Stay strong for the fans and catch those fish. The life of a fisherman is a hard one. You have to understand fish and really consider the prospects of it fishing. It 
Swell Citadel. I'm going to go ahead and move on down the riverbank so that we can do some bass fishing. I'm going to wait until the evening because that's when the bass are most active. All right. We're down here on still on the bank of the Muddy River in Missouri. And it's about 7 p.m. 70 degrees out. It's quite comfortable. And we're going to do some bass fishing. So that means we want to shorten the lead a little bit. Down to about a foot and a half. And we're going to put a grasshopper on the line. Because the bass like the grasshoppers. And we're going to use number two hook. That ought to do well. Well, we got a couple of questions again from viewers. <coughs> Pardon me. Gamester Power says, a serious question about the morals of fishing. Going off of the sex at the bottom of the lake, which is better? Mermaid or reverse mermaid. Well, in my estimation, that depends entirely on the body of the mermaid. Sometimes you want to see the front. Sometimes you don't want to see the back. I don't think you can have sex with a mermaid. That's probably true. Got another question from Matico. It says, uh, Do you guys have a favorite fish to catch? <laughs> Chip, I hear a wild moose off in the distance. Do you hear that wild moose? Sounds like it has some kind of a sinus, sinus issue. There it is again. Well, I hope it's okay. It's a mating call, Chip. If you've never heard a, mace, a, a moose mating call, it sounds like that. Drop my keys. It's kind of majestic. Well, uh, as far as a favorite fish to catch, I think my favorite fish to catch is whatever the next fish is. I think everyone's special, you know? I'd like to thank you for asking that question. I have a very refined taste for catching fish. I've been um, deep sea fishing many times throughout my career. And I enjoy catching stripers and bluefish because I like the fight they put up. If you've ever wrangled in a bluefish, and they're, they're, they're nasty fish. They have a little bit of teeth on them, very, very sharp mm -hmm. teeth. They're, they're, they will fight you. Um, but stripers, are, are they can grow very big. And they're very, um, oh, Chip. I got a little bit of a snag. Oh, Chip, can you get out of this one? Well, I don't want to break the line here. Well, Chip, I got a bit of a snag. Or we might lose this grasshopper and this hook. Well, you know what, Earl, it's all right. We got six more after. I'll go ahead and, uh, I think I'm going to have to cut the you line here. The line there? I'm going to break the line. Yep, just broke it. We're going to have to reapply the grasshopper. You know, i got to say, I do have a special fondness for uh, carp fishing. The carp, they can get pretty big, sometimes 20, 30 pounds, easily. And uh, they're bottom feeders, so you can go ahead and set a line with some uh, some bait. And just leave the rod and uh, cook some hot dogs and some hamburgers. And then eventually, when you see the rod start moving... You go ahead and you start fighting them. And since they're such big fish, you can put up a real fight. Loud and clear. I 
If yours have a favorite fish to catch, we'd be happy to hear it. Go ahead and let us know. I'm still trying to catch a bass here. Having a little bit of trouble, honestly. Seems they're not biting today. The only thing we've been able to catch so far has just been a snag. Maybe a broken branch at the bottom or maybe a cinder block. I'm not quite sure what's at the bottom, but... Sometimes. Locals like to dump their old appliances in the river. I once caught a snag on a stove. Well, that's good. Uh, the thing about fishing for bass is you want to get close to the uh, the weeds and the mm -hmm. reeds, mm -hmm. and you can kind of, kind of just 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 kind of see them. It's just just barely make them out there. They're there, but they're there's they're really hard to see there. They're there. Can you see them? I can barely see them, but they're there. You want to get I your. I can't see them. You want to get your. Your lure, just long on the outside of them, so that the fish that are hiding in the weeds. Yeah, that's usually a pretty good spot for me. Why don't I try moving it a little bit over? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. JP Bluesman says, "Do you guys enjoy fly fishing?" You know, I gotta say, that's an art that I never mastered myself. It looks pretty enjoyable, but it seems like it takes a considerable amount of skill. And, uh, it's something I need to practice still. Oh, Chip, I've got a really good fly fishing story. Um, 2006 or seven, I can't remember which year, but I was on the banks of the, uh, Fire, Fireson Valley River. Fireson is a valley north of Arizona. Um, I was I was fly fishing. I was doing some fly fishing, and I was with um, my friend, friend of mine, um, Jerry, and we were in our waders, which are, you know, what waders are? They're they're pants that they don't allow water to get into your trousers. So we're doing our fly fishing. Jerry's probably 20, 30 feet behind me. I've got a really long line on. And fly fishing is uh, a whipping motion. You whip your line out and you kind of... Kind of like a pendulum kind of... No. It's like you, you fly your... Throw the string out over the water and pull it back and forth. So it's like a... Like a fly. Like a pendulum. Oh, okay, go not, ahead. Not a plan. Go ahead. Then go ahead. I said Jerry's probably twenty, thirty feet behind me. I'm, I'm maybe not paying a hundred percent attention, so I'm whipping it. Suddenly, I feel like I got something behind me. My rope, my line goes tight as I try to pull it forward, and the rod stops in my hand. It's a good story, Earl. I think we might want to try going fly fishing sometime together. I think that'd be a good idea. Because Jerry doesn't want to go with me anymore. Not after last time. I never particularly liked Jerry. I did. Hmm. Did it have anything to do with the fact that he was African American? You know, the bass just aren't. They're not biting today. Um. I might switch to a worm.
Well, you know what? We got these minnows. I'm gonna go ahead and try the minnow. Chip, have you ever tried a mushroom on the end of your line? Talking shiitake or portobello? If I'm being completely honest, either one works just fine. Now, what do you get with a mushroom? Bluegill. Well, seems they'll bite about just about anything. Montico says, I once caught a mahi-mahi down at the shore. That was a great catch. Cooked it up later, and it was delicious. You know, sometime we'll have to talk about our recipes, our fish recipes. Because half the, the job of being a fisherman is cooking it up afterwards and making a great meal. Look at that. Not a great catch. It's a young largemouth. Nothing very big, but uh, it's a respectable little guy. And he's going to grow up to be a strong largemouth bass. We can catch him later. I'm going to release him. Send him back to his family. Yep. Yeah, why don't we try to get maybe one more fish? Chip, looks like you've got a snag. I don't think I do. Hmm. It's fine. The fish will get it. Maybe a fish will free it eventually. Gamester Power says, Do you guys like to read? If so, what do you read? I'm personally not too much of a reader. I like to read fishing magazines because they have lots of pictures. <laughs> Earl's a bit more of a reader. <laughs> That's true, Chip. That was a I think I am snagged. There's a couple materials that I do like to read in my spare time. Of course, number one being Anglers Monthly. So, um, if you don't have a subscription, it's a great magazine. Like Chip said, well, I don't know what magazines Chip exactly subscribes to, but it's got a lot of pictures. And... Actually, I was featured in the July 2014 edition. And they had a beautiful little biopy about me, talking about my career as a fisherman, and also as a father and a husband. Besides... Fisherman Monthly. I enjoy Reader's Digest. And occasionally I'll pick up a Goosebumps book by R.L. Stein. My favorite will always be Say Cheese or Die. Because I like the title. And the cover art is really swell. Well, I like the Goosebumps series myself. Because they had a lot of pictures on the front. <laughs> no stories about fishing, though. Not, not sure R.L. Stein was much of an angler. Well, I think you might be right about that snag. I think you might have to cut the line there. really don't want to lose these minnows, though. They're, uh, they're not cheap. I think I'll get it eventually. I'm glad you asked that question about uh, my wife and I.
Well, I'm going to go ahead and uh, try to work with this brand new bass jig that we got. Got the wrong rod here. We're going to go ahead and use the casting rod, the casting reel. And we're going to put the bass jig on. And we're going to give this a shot. Now, this is the first time we've used this particular jig. Oh, sorry there. This is a little bit trickier with the casting rod, especially with all them weeds. So we're going to want to try to steer clear of them. It's hard to see them from here, but trust me, they're there. And uh, we can cast much farther with this, as you can see. So we're going to go ahead and cast. We might get a snag or two, but maybe we can catch some bass. Sally's doing very well. She's, um, as you know, she's a nurse. She's, um... She's a fine nurse at that. Yeah, if I ever get um, a hook in my rear end, I can always depend on Sally to pull it out and put a colorful band-aid on my behind. Um, the girls are doing very well. Sarah is a freshman in college. She's a great soccer player. And I think this year she's also dabbling and a little bit of lacrosse. She's a fine athlete. And of course, Ginger, youngest, she's, uh, she's a little bit more of a party kid. You know, she's, um, she's, 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 she's living, she's living life. She's just living her life and enjoying her time in high school. Um, you know, getting into you know, boys and cars and all sorts of other things that, you know, girls her age just get into. But I think that's a beautiful thing, huh? And I respect that as a father. You let her go ahead and do that, you know, sometimes. Well, Chip, let me tell you something. It's not, it's not like I, it's not worth the couple gray hairs I got popping up over my ears. I just, they're, they're just coming up, they're cropping up. Well, and I'm starting to, I'm starting to thin, my hair starting to thin on the top. And at some point I might have a, a, a my, my bald spot might exceed my head. And I have to deal with the fact that male pot pattern baldness is a part of my genetics. It's a devastating illness. And that's okay. I can live without hair. It will be cold in the winter. There's no question about that. Chip, you've got a full head of lustrous blonde hair. Would you want to talk about that for a long time? I do. I've had many styles with it. When I was younger, I, I let it grow pretty long down past my shoulders. Sometimes I'd put it in a ponytail. Chip, I'm, I'm going to be honest. The first time we met... I thought you were He-Man. I do have a pretty barrel chest. I like to attribute it to plenty of fishing, plenty of sunshine, and beef steaks. I love beef steaks. They make for a delicious meal. My wife Sally, she makes the most delicious beef steaks I think ever created. You're gonna have to invite me over sometime soon to have a beef steak. I don't think we have any room. I'm going to go ahead and reel this one in. And I think that might be a good place to end. We got one more question. How often do you guys go fishing? You might be right, Chip. This might be the perfect question to sign off on. The answer is simple. Every day. All day, every day. 
I like going fishing. It's the one thing I enjoy doing where I don't have to think, I don't have to feel. I can just relax. And relax is actually on my to-do list for today. Sometimes, I like to think about what it's like to be a fish. Not having arms. So anyways, we want to thank all the viewers who watched and asked questions. The one caller, Charles, good luck with your disability and your situation. And uh, you should tune in next time where we will be catching more, more fish. fish. I'm Chip Hamlin. And I'm Earl Prescott. And this is Tackle, Tackle Talk, Talk with Chip, Chip and Earl. So long.